CBS News Miami. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy. President-elect Donald Trump is wasting no time announcing his nominees for major positions in the government. The choice of Marco Rubio, Secretary of State, was widely expected and was generally greeted with favorable comments from both sides of the aisle. Whether you agree with him or not, Rubio is considered a serious person when it comes to foreign policy. But then there are the more bizarre and many would argue dangerous picks. For instance, RFK Jr. for Health and Human Services Secretary. He's an anti-vax conspiracy theorist who has suggested vaccine research created the AIDS virus and that vaccines cause autism in children. It doesn't. Trump has also tapped Tulsi Gabbard for Director of National Intelligence. The former Congresswoman has spread Russian propaganda on Ukraine and Syria. And then you have Matt Gates for Attorney General. Gates immediately resigned from Congress after his nomination Wednesday, hoping to head off the release of a House ethics report on Friday into allegations he engaged in drug-fueled sex parties with young, possibly underage girls. Now, as the nation prepares for a Trump presidency in which Republicans control both the House and the Senate, I spoke to Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz for his thoughts on Trump's picks and his win. We have to go backwards. Um... You know, this is about the economy, stupid. I mean, that's the number one issue, and inflation. And even though the world was dealing with inflation and the U.S. was doing the best among the world, right, in, every, in people's everyday lives with groceries or rent or gas, <clears throat> that's how they felt. And they have a right to feel that way. We can't tell them how they should or shouldn't feel. Uh, but we we have to come out with a message on what we offered, what Donald Trump offered. And, and Donald Trump once again out communicated us. He did that in 16, he, he did it again here. What's the next two years gonna look like in the House of Representatives? Oh, good God. I, I mean, who knows? I mean, look, the, the, they were in the majority in, in, in the 118th. Uh, I thought the country might give Trump the wheel, but give the, him breaks uh, by giving the Democrats Congress, but Trump's you know, uh, vote was so big, winning the, uh, the popular vote. Uh, swept a lot of Democrats out in, in districts we should have won. But who knows? I mean, it's going to be a very tight majority. We'll see if they can't contain the chaos. Uh, but, I mean, look what's going on in his appointments right now. <clears throat> Donald Trump is appointing people like a guy who knows he's not on the ballot again, doesn't care about any consequences. And so the pressure he's going to put on these Republicans is going to be immense. Um, this is he. This is what he told everybody. If you watch his rallies and you listen to his videos, this is what he said he was going to do. Um, you know, I don't, I, it, maybe people weren't here listening to him or didn't take him seriously, but nothing is a surprise at the moment. He telegraphed all of it. Uh, and so it it is going to be uh, interesting, tough, uh, problematic. Use whatever verb or adjective you want. Well, how, let me, I'm, I'm, so how do you view your role going forward as as a Democrat in this House, in, you know, also knowing that the Senate is now in Republican control, the White House in Republican control, you probably can't expect a lot from the Supreme Court to provide those guardrails. What realistically, how do you define your role now going forward? Is it, so, it, so I mean, give me a sense for what, what you, your job is going to be. Yeah, well, the good news in the Senate so far, John Thune says they're keeping the legislative filibuster. And so if that stands, that's a big deal. It's always why I supported the filibuster, uh, even when some Democrats wanted to get rid of it. It's the only guardrail right now <clears throat> if if one party, in this instance, the Republicans, uh, have the whole kit and caboodle. So we'll have to see how that goes. That's a big piece, I think, to what happens in the House. Um, you know, what will we do, Jim, I'll, or what will I do? I'll do the same things I've always done, where there are areas of agreement, broken clock can be right twice a day, I will work across the aisle. And where I think they are absolutely wrong or abusing their power, like I saw with James Comer trying to do a fake faux Biden impeachment, I will bring everything I can to to effectuate that and shut it down. Um, and so <clears throat> we're going to have to wait until January. We're going to we're like it, it's tough to react to to stuff that hasn't happened yet. But based on what we're seeing, they're clearly coming. So you talk about appointments so far as we're. We're taping this uh, late Thursday afternoon, and there are now reports that uh, RFK Jr. Uh, is in line now to be named uh, the head of 
Health and Human Services. Uh, your reaction to that? Uh, well, do you mind if we cut this interview short and I run to CBS real quick? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, look, by the way, the Trump transition head said that wouldn't happen. OK, and now it's happened uh, again. Uh, who knows if we take the words of RFK Jr.? I mean, nobody knows now what's going to happen in, in health uh, in, in, in this country. Sure, there are things we can always improve, right? Yes, there are ingredients in our food that we could get out. But that is not what RFK has just talked about. He's talked about upending medicine in this country, upending vaccines in this country. Um, it, it is just super unclear what what he would do. Um, and it, it is that unknown that should concern people. Uh, again, I don't know if he can get confirmed, but I don't know that Donald Trump cares because Donald Trump may not be going for confirmations. He may be going for recess appointments uh, b based on this whole list of people he's put forward. I mean, he's really telling the senators, good luck with your reelection, uh, because he's going to make them take some really, really tough votes. One of those nominations is for Attorney General Matt Gates. I know you know Matt. You've served with Matt. Uh, you have a good relationship with him. But do you think it's uh, what is your reaction, though, to the notion of Matt Gates leading the Department of Justice? Well, I mean, look, first, if I were in the Senate, I'd be voting against these nominations, including Matt. OK, uh, but what I said previously, uh, I still stand by, which is, you know, Donald Trump won the election. Elections have consequences. Why are we surprised that he's taking his most loyal, ardent defenders and Matt Gates, most loyal, ardent defender, uh, the guy that he turned to in Congress, uh, a gifted debater, like his policies or don't like his policies. Um, and he's putting him in the Department of Justice. Donald Trump said what he was going to do with the Department of Justice. He told everybody that. We're surprised at the vessel he picked. And so, you know, elections have consequences. Um, and, you know, it's, it's again, it, you know, it's just who knows if Matt Gates were to get over to DOJ, what would go on over there? We, we talk about Gates. We talk about RFK. Maybe one of the even more concerning is uh, for a lot of folks is Tulsi Gabbard as head of Director of National Intelligence. Yeah, uh, and by the way, that's and that's the one I'm most concerned about. Although that's like saying, well, what what would I rather get, tuberculosis or polio? You know, but but I, I'm the most concerned about Tulsi. This is someone who went and had private meetings with Assad, who you know said, uh, you know, Putin's just misunderstood, and now she's going to have all of our intelligence. Uh, and so that one has not just repercussions in this country; that has repercussions around the world. Uh, and so. It's tough to be like this one's more concerning than the next, uh, but that one that one was really shocking, I think, to the world system. Do you get the sense that there is a, a potential here for Republicans to so dramatically overreach that it costs them some way? I've heard this discussion that that what Democrats may be able to do is wait for Republicans to go that bridge too far. For some, it may be Matt Gates. For some, right, it may be like, Tulsi that's like, But that's like saying, oh, if we only have more gun deaths in this country, maybe eventually we'll get good gun legislation, right? I, I mean, we're going to have to go through that uh, to 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 get there. And so, you know, it's they're going to overreach because Donald is going to overreach, and he's not on the ballot again. All of these other people are going to be on the ballot. So he's going to overreach. That's going to that's going to happen. But the idea that we'll just let it let's just let it ride and then we'll capitalize in two years. That's that's the problem with this place, quite frankly, is that, you know, it's not about what's good or bad. It's just about what what what's the next election and the next election and the next election. Well, hasn't Donald Trump already started floating the idea that maybe he's entitled to another term? Yeah, because well, that's a good way to own the libs. But you can see based on Donald Trump's appointments he knows he's not on the ballot again. He knows he's not going to have to deal with this in the future. He's putting a lot of Republicans in tough spots, I think. Uh, but but I, I'm not going to comment on, on every little you know thing that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth. <clears throat> we get caught up in that. Uh, he is not running for re-election. He can't run for re-election. Uh, let's move on from that topic. Marco Rubio, I'm curious. I, I would expect that he's going to be able to be confirmed rather easily. In the uh, for, for a secretary of state, Marco already has, Marco has Fetterman, a Democrat, saying he's going to vote for him. So, so Marco will get confirmed. What does that look like in terms of Cuba, Venezuela, Haiti, Latin America in particular? 
What, do you think that, that for so often it seems as if Latin America has never really gotten the place it deserves in terms of foreign policy, whether it was by uh, Democrats or Republicans in the White House. Does that change at all, do you think? Yeah, I think so. And look, obviously, I have vast disagreements on certain policies with Marco Rubio and Mike Waltz as well, one of my colleagues, uh, who's going to be the national security advisor. But those picks are very different than RFK and Tulsi Gabbard, right? Um, you know, those are definitely more mainstream picks. I agree with Marco Rubio on Iran, on Latin America, on Russia. Same thing with Mike Waltz uh, uh, as well. Uh, but I, I do think it's a, a big deal that the Secretary of State's going to really understand Latin America, really understand Cuba. Um, you know, I, I think that'll be a plus for Marco as he's going through. But but by the way, this group, I mean, he, this is not like there's some strategy here to create some team of rivals. I mean, the conversations and arguments that are going to go on between Tulsi Gabbard, Marco Rubio, Mike Waltz, are, uh, you know, and I don't know, the sec death from Fox News. I mean, it's going to be it, it, it's going to be significant uh, because the gulf of how Marco looks at Iran and Russia versus how Tulsi looks at it is is night and day. Uh, I'm curious as to also your reaction to uh, former Governor Mike Huckabee being the U.S. ambassador to Israel. Does that help in terms of the in terms of trying to bring things to a close in, uh, you know, with with regard to what's going on with Gaza and, and the rest? Or is that likely to heighten the tensions even further? That's a good question, actually. I actually don't know the answer to that. That, you know, I know Mike Huckabee is a big defender of Israel and has a has a record on that. But that actually was a pick that I did not even see coming. I didn't see that fitting the situation. I had heard many other names to be ambassador for Israel uh, and not Mike Huckabee. So, you know, look, obviously there are some past statements that Mike Huckabee has made, but it, I, I just don't know. Now, there will be areas that Mike Huckabee and I will work on together. Uh, I want to get Saudi Arabia into the Abraham Accords or a like agreement. I want to get the hostages out. I do want to bring the Gaza war to an end. I do want to make sure Israel has uh, all the military weapons that they need. I do want to make sure that Israel has the flexibility to get Hamas off their border and to, to make sure that we have a tough policy against Iran. Uh, but we also have to see how, how Huckabee is going to conduct himself. <clears throat> there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, right? Uh, we have to figure out how to deal with that. I blame Hamas for that, of course, but we do have to figure out how to deal with that situation. When we come back, the chair of the Republican Party of Florida. Stay with us.